I will start with uh, some uh, safety things because we are dealing with uh, thin sheet metal and there's a couple of uh, big risks with working with that so I would definitely use a pair of goggles uh, at least at some of the Hayeksulf some of the moments and also a pair of gloves uh, preferable cutting proof gloves because this sheet metal is 0 0.5 to 0 0.4 millimeter thick and it's like this is razor sharp you will end up with things looking like this and this one it disappears into your body without you even knowing it. I've been working with sheet metal for over 30 years and if you don't use gloves your fingers will look like this. So please take care of yourself. Okay then. What I want to show you is how to transform this cooking set that you buy from the store to a finished product looking like this. The ones that follow my feed see that I use this uh, stove all the time. And it's a really simple thing to do. You, I think that the tools that you need cost more than uh, let's say the stove itself. So if we start with what you get from the store, at least this one that I bought from uh, Jula, it's a three piece stove. It includes one big pot with the lid and one small pot. And this is uh, what we're going to use. I guess you can do this with any cooking set that contains these three items. You need to work with either regular steel or stainless steel. Because the inside of this, when you use the stove, is approximately the, the steel gets dark red. That means that it's approximately eight to nine hundred degrees Celsius. And if you use aluminum, for example, that one melts at six hundred and sixty degrees. So steel or stainless steel. So we will start with the outside. The thing is just to take away the handle and what we want this will become the outside of the stove and you have seen it before I have a piece here that's already done you need these holes all the way around it to let the air in and how to do that then we need the tools tape measures to take measurements, a pair of sheet metal scissors to do cutting. This one it's not necessary but it becomes easier. I think the English word for this is compasses or divider. You need a wrench or a regular wrench. You need a step drill or several uh, diameters of drills you need a small drill because all the holes that we were going to make in this you start with a small drill you don't need to push so hard to come through the steel and it doesn't let's say stick and then you need a marker and a drilling machine so for starters then, to make these holes, you want them to be close to the bottom here. And you decide, depending on what kind of material you're using, how far up it should be. In this case I want them to be approximately 20 millimeters. Then you take your marker and you find something, you take the measure of course, saying that okay I want all holes to be approximately there. Then you can take your marker, 
take whatever you have at home. It could be a box of matches, another pen or whatever. Here I'm using a couple of pieces of leather. Just put the pen on top, put it like this and just turn it. Then you got this mark exactly on the same height <coughs> all the way around. You can see it's a little bit of a glare there. But then it comes to the math. We want, it depends on how thorough you are. I want all my holes to be in the exact same position all the way around. So you take the tape measurement, you measure the circumference. And then you divide that by, with the amount of holes you want. So let's say that you divide it by, you want 12 holes. You divide it by 12, you get, yeah, whatever measure it becomes, like five centimeters or something. You take your tape measurement, your pen again, you mark every hole all the way around. do is a little bit quick so you see exactly where to drill the holes then you take your drilling machine I'm not actually gonna do any let's say drilling I have a piece here that's already done you take the small drill drill all the holes first when that is done this is where you really need to use your glasses because the small pieces that comes from drilling if that one ends up in your eye you will burn it and you will uh, probably lose your sight after that one is done you change the drill to either the step drill that i got looks like a christmas tree and drill the holes again now you don't need to push so hard and the good thing about this kind of drill is that it takes the edges off so you don't get these sharp edges and when you have drilled all the holes all the way around turn it inside out and try to drill from the inside as well to take away those small pieces of sheet metal and here is where you need the gloves because bigger drills they can suddenly capture the steel metal and just spin this around and then you will cut your hand instead so use gloves and goggles when this is done you will end up with the product looking like this holes all the way around and now we have one more hole to do in this one and that's the big one in the top you got this from the beginning and you want this hole the first thing you need to do is find the exact center point of this you can do that in a different kind of way you can sit with your tape measurement measure and sooner or later you will find the center point but if you get one of those the same thing when you have find the center point, you push it hard and you end up with a small, I don't know if you can see it here, a small dent here. After that one is done, use this one. Here we want to leave approximately 10 millimeters into the side. So you make the mark like this all the way around if you don't have this one you can do it the old-fashioned way you can use your marker put your finger like this and turn it and you will end up with something like this then you drill a small hole again in the middle, then use the bigger one, 
So you get the hole at least 15 to 20 millimeters wide. And then you need to do, use the sheet metal scissors. And if you don't get this one, I don't know what you can do. You can drill several holes and try to file it. But the easiest one, if you have a local, let's say, tinsmith, you can go to them and ask them to do this work. Because this takes a little bit of feeling to do it. And again, this is quite uh, easy to hurt yourself. But you will end up with a piece like this. You see the hole in the middle. Then I start cutting all the way around until you come to your mark. And then you just follow the mark all the way around and you end up in a piece like this. And that's it with the top part. This one is done. Then we go to two pieces at the same time. The small part in the middle, do the same with that, get rid of the handle. The same with this one, find the center point and do the same with the lid, find the center point. After that one, you take your divider again and you make a circle on this one, quite close to the end here, because here is where we're going to put the bolts and you don't it want you don't want it too close to the center because then it comes a little bit wobbly and you don't want it too close to the edge because you need to put the screws in and the nuts on the inside. So let's say approximately 10, 10 millimeters from the edge. You take this one or again with the marker and here's the only let's say crucial measurements on this thing. This circle on this one and on the lid has to be the exactly the same one because those three holes that we're going to make now has to correspond with each other because we're going to bolt them together with uh, screws and nuts so you make the circle on this one and without changing the measurements we do exactly the same thing on the lid And after you have done these two circles, you have to divide that circumference in three. You can do that by, by measurement or you can use the divider. So you get three holes exactly on the same position. And mark those with the marker. So if you can see here, these are that hole that hole and that hole and it's the same on the bottom now I have already put in the screws here so you got three holes here and three holes marked here when that is done you drill all the other holes here it's up to you if you want them even divided or if you just want to drill it this could be a mesh of any, it's only gonna let air in to the stove. And when you have done that, we're starting with the bolts and nuts. I'm using M5, it's five millimeters. You can use from four up to eight, it's up to you, but I think that uh, five millimeters is uh, okay for a small thing like this. You put them in from the back side. Like that. Put first one nut on the inside. And then use the wrench to tighten this up. And it locks itself. And if it don't lock itself, you need to hold on the back side with the screwdriver and tighten it. But because it's stainless steel, it's kind of uh, not slippery that way around. So it will lock itself. And then you 
tighten it really hard. And now we come to something uh, slightly crucial. I don't know if you can see it here, but on the, with this one that I just put in, it's only one nut. Then I put two more nuts on the inside. It's because we want the distance from this lid to the bottom of this one because you want air to come in from the bottom and up into this one and in this case I just put two more knots so I got three and after let's say experimenting with this I found that I mean if you use six millimeters or eight millimeters thick uh, screws and nuts you will probably only use two on the inside but the crucial thing is that this distance between this one and the bottom of this one should be approximately 10 millimeters that's perfect because that's another crucial measurement that I will show you later to the top so tighten the second nut and then put on the third one you end up with this then hopefully these three holes will correspond with this one so you should be able to find those three nuts there and just push this down a little bit of convincing can you see they are sticking up here now. One, two, and three. Then it's only to put the nuts on the inside. You probably need to longer this one a little bit. I guess many of you got these tools at home, so no problem. Then we are tightening the nuts on the inside. When this is done, the stove is more or less done, but I will try to show you now why this is crucial with this measurement. This is the inside of the stove where you put the wood, you put the outside on, and I hope you can see this. Do you, do you see the space here between the inside and the outside? If this gap is too narrow, you won't get the hot air that comes on the inside of the outer shell to come into the fire and if it's too big it, yeah, it comes too much air so it's really crucial that this little space here between the outer wall and the inner wall is approximately 8 to 10 millimeters and it becomes with a, this stove at least, uh, at least with this kind of stove, it comes automatically if you keep it 10 millimeters between the bottom of this, this one and that one. So now the stove itself is done. Now we only need to fix something on the top here to put it on because if you try to boil anything on this one now, you will kill the fire because no air comes in and you don't have any possibility to put more wood in. This we make out of straight sheet metal, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, you can find this at any hardware store. 
and the measurement of this one is also after experimental it's five centimeters approximately two inches for you who don't use the metric system and you take a piece and cut it as long as the outside of this the same measurement as the outside of this end and then you mark the inside and then you will end up I have made everything bigger now just to show you you will end up with something like this these pieces you should cut away and you will cut a small slice in the middle up to exactly the middle point of top and bottom because we're going to take those two and put together them and if you do this by yourself here is where you absolutely need to use your goggles as I said I've been doing this for 30 years and I have colleagues that lost their eyes because when you cut this I will see if it's possible to to do it now we call this snipping and when you cut first this part and when you cut the second part no it didn't happen but it usually says ding and it flies away and you get a small piece of razor sharp sheet metal and if you get that in your eye it's bye bye that eye but when you're done with that you will end up with the piece looking like this this is the one that I usually use and the only thing you need to do is to make an exact copy of this but this slice you made from the other way so you see here the slides on the top and here's on the bottom because you're going to put them together like that to get the cross and it slides it cannot go that way it cannot go that way and it cannot wobble and when you put something on here now you got the small space here that lets the fire come out of the stove and you also can put more wood into it and bear with me a second here I will show you something this stove is very effective it's due to the big holes here so if you want it to be let's say this will eat up your wood instantly so don't feed it with small twigs it's no idea because it just say woof and it's gone so take twigs at least like your fingers cut it into two inches pieces like this it's approximately two centimeters by two centimeters those are perfect and if you take branches take the same thickness and saw it directly off the tree in two inches pieces if you do that from the beginning you will earn a lot of things afterwards because six or seven of these inside this stove you build it like a log house inside one there one there and build it like a house six or seven of these will boil half a liter of water within five or six minutes if you have one liter of bottle you maybe put in one more and that's the good thing about this one because if you see that the fire is starting to let's say go down you take one more piece and you just flick it in here you can flick it in on four sides so that's actually it the final product this one I have used a lot and this one that I just made this new one I will make a piece like this for this one 
and if or where when I uh, reach 2000 subscribers I will have this one as a giveaway but I hope that you do your own because it's a it's a satisfaction to do something by yourself that works that well I thought from the beginning that why not bring the Trianga or the Primus Omnifuel or whatever but this is a, a mix it's real fire you can feel the smell you can hear the sound of it and I just love it and when you are done when me and my wife is out we make coffee on this one and when it boils we start to pour the coffee and when we are finished there is nothing left inside this stove you can actually just take this off and blow out the ashes. you can see the ashes blow out the ashes nothing is there it's extremely efficient to burn the wool so i hope that you learned at least something and maybe this was a fast review so if you want to know something you can just uh, send me a message or something like that and i will try to explain it a little bit more in detail but thank you all for uh, watching I wish you a nice Friday afternoon and I hope that you will get use of this in the future. So cheers, see you, bye bye.